everyone. Um, no. First of all, thanks SideFX and thanks Piana for having us here today. Um, my name is Magdalena and that guy there <laughs> is Nikita and uh, he'll be joining remotely from London today. Um, we are creative directors and founders of Manifest Studio. We are a London-based uh, motion design and graphic studio. Um, and here is our reel. Let's talk flips. As you could see, we are manifest. We really like our flips. <laughs> so it's, it's easy to say when we were invited to give a test ride to the new sip, um, sop flip, we were super excited. And um, in fact, we had so much fun with it that what was supposed to be just one shot turned into five shots and plenty of R&D on top of that. Um, a quick disclaimer before I jump into into the thing. Uh, I don't see the presentation still, but I can hear like where the things are going. So just to not to interrupt the flow of this. Uh, so today we will be dissecting a few of those shots from uh, from that film, uh, more like uh, case scenarios. Uh, and really, the point is just to show how easy the setup and very straightforward uh, it was to 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 produce the the end result. But before going. To, to that, let's see that result first. Uh, next slide. kept it super simple. We actually kept it basic because our thought was, let's check two things. First of all, is how, how scary it is because what's Flip originally known for is how, how super scary it is to every newbie, Houdini newbie. So we wanted to, sorry, my mic. We wanted to check how someone who just opens Houdini for the first time, how quick, quick they can get to the final result with the new SOP flip. And the second thing is from the perspective of studio workflow, where we have to produce a lot of stuff in a very little amount of time without producing, without actually making lots of setups. And flip setups were well known for this, for the fact that they were really complicated to create. So those two things that we wanted to check and, um, also, this is not by any by any means. This is not a masterclass. <laughs> this is quite an opposite of a masterclass, and uh, we're just going to be talking about what we liked, what we didn't like, what still has to be done, and is it production ready in general. So right. yeah. So soap versus dog. Um, but what what I want to touch uh, the ground on first is uh, to give a bit of the context of how we uh, started with Houdini. Um, we started uh, with Houdini, I think, version 15. And uh, around that time, the Houdini wasn't treated as a design tool as such uh, among the studios, design studios in, in London, but uh, uh, instead it was more like uh, effects oriented software. Uh, so the only chance to, to actually to dive into Houdini and kind of actually start to uh, base your career on this is to go through every different uh, solver, which at that time was uh, pretty different from each other. So once you open Houdini, what you're left with is DOPS, a lot of uh, linking between the nodes, jumping in and out, a lot of uh, a lot of things, especially for the newcomers. So it was very, uh, very challenging start and uh, a steep learning curve. Uh, 
and I think a lot of people uh, might agree there. But then uh, sometime later, uh, side effects released Vellum, um, and there was, uh, this kind of started bringing uh, everything into under one hood, under SOP uh, context, and uh, everything started getting uh, more unified. Then followed uh, RBD solver in SOP, Pyro, and now it's uh, flip time. So the idea is that um, all the all the solvers, which were a little bit different from each other, now they they have the same structure. So it's kind of easier to switch. Even if you don't know one, you know the structure is more or less going to be the same, similar. So it's easier uh, and more approachable to jump in. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see how easy it is to actually set up some hmm. flip solver. Um, first of all, all you need is literally three nodes. First one is the flip container, which is where your simulation lives. That's where you decide how big your container is. And um, that's where you set up your particle separation. And so I think the, the, main, the main difference from the, from the previous uh, solver, the, the new feature here is uh, that we are no longer bounded by the by the box domain, uh, but in fact, if, uh, depending on the simulation needs, it could be uh, pretty much uh, any shape. So um, as long as the right geometry is plugged into the input. Um, and then the other big thing is the main could be animated now, uh, which is uh, such a, a lever on the jobs with the involving boats, oceans, so you don't need to sim follow it, but instead you can just uh, create custom for, um, domain of a custom shape and just animate it along this plane. Saves time. Um, so, and, and the next, um, the, uh, the next node is uh, hard to miss uh, while setting up the simulation is a flip boundary, which is a bit of a fancier name for uh, um, the emitting source. Um, and here is uh, another new feature uh, in this uh, in this node, so uh, in soft flip solver, there is a, a new way of emitting particles. It's called pressure based uh, emission. Um, again, it will be covered in details in masterclass. But what it's used for, it comes really handy for the certain type of uh, scenes where you have to fill up objects with a liquid or make the half empty glass uh, half full, or among those lines. Um, and next one, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I still don't see the presentation. Yes. So I, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of guessing on what, on what slide we currently are. <laughs> uh, and the, the last, uh, among those three, uh, core nodes is there is the solver itself, but there is nothing really, uh, extraordinary. It's just all the, all the, uh, parameters and details we expected uh, and we got used to in a uh, dot network. They just here, the differences, it's all in soft. Don't, no need for a jump. Mm -hmm. And then if you're feeling fancy, there you can add more sources into your simulation. But that comes with advantages and disadvantages that we will talk about later. But to sum it up, what we actually did, we set up a SOP and DOP simulation and compared how long it takes to, to do each. And actually setting up SOP until the point where it's ready to ready to work, literally plug and play, took half the time that it takes normally to do the DOP simulation. So it, it's super. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, which is a major win. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next thing, um, whatever works, and that's in terms of motion graphics and stuff we do on a daily basis, it's, it's not that important that things are accurate in terms of physical um, accuracy or how real life it is. So, so you, we end up faking up a lot of stuff. And that what brings us to the first shot we produced for the sequence. And uh, in this shot, we used the animated sphere um, with a soft peak as our collider. Sorry, I think I just, yeah. Um, yeah, we used an animated sphere with soft peak as our collider. It's worth to mention that with soft flip, the colliders are treated as volumes. So that's why we extruded it. And also 
the, all the control over your collider comes from the um, flip container. That's where you decide how detailed and how, um, how good actually your collider will act. All right, I believe we're in, uh, are we on the next slide? Yeah. All right, we're on the next slide. So with the multiple sources, um, once we started working with the, uh, with the new solver, uh, we wanted to see like, if that will actually suit the, our workflow. And what we were looking for is to, to have the ability uh, to, to use multiple sources uh, for, the, for the input as a, uh, as an input, uh, but also we were looking for a way to uh, to assign different forces for each different uh, um, em emitting uh, emitting source. If that makes sense. Uh, well, basically, we wanted to uh, our previous workflow from uh, from the dop uh, from the dop times uh, was to set up the uh, groups over the different points and then just uh, influence those points absolutely separately but within the same simulation here is a little bit tricky because uh, the way um, the source is passed into the uh, solver itself is is not no longer point based but it only gives the um, the volume and so the conversion happens actually within the solver itself so that was that raised uh, a little bit of a kind of workaround how to, how to go how to pass through this um the simplest the simplest method we found so far is uh, just to simply assign color per each uh, um, color or any other uh, attribute per each uh, meeting source and then get inside of the solver and through the a little bit of x assign groups manually and that works just perfectly and i think th this was the shot where we wanted to test run it and it worked yeah so custom forces that right. was another thank thing. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then the second is just that uh, it's all based, uh, all of those kind of like tricks we wanted to, uh, to test run all, all came together in the shot. So one of our favorite ways of art directing, uh, fluids in, uh, here at Manifest is literally just to use, uh, custom velocity, uh, force, uh, velocity field and the force field. Um, what it gives, it gives the very smooth and very predictable results. Like it's only it's a fail proof. Um, the way we organize it, like we, we build a tool around this. So our, what our tool does, um, I'm not sure if we're seeing it right now, but, uh, um, the tool we use is, uh, uses a spline as an input and converts it, uh, passes the normals from this spline to a point cloud. And this point cloud, uh, converted into, uh, volume field. So what, what this does, uh, first of all, uh, you can just easily uh, multiply and add like any different vectors to the same points. And as long as uh, your math uh, and logically uh, makes sense, uh, the tool will always work out. And this approach is like sort of this is solid proof. The other thing is that we can uh, have a lot of control on the, how forces affect along the spline, how different uh, among the splines the forces are and uh, smoothing it whole everything is pretty much here um yeah next slide please yeah <laughs> um faking the bubble mm -hmm. all right so with, with this shot it's like it's not exactly related to to soap as such there is no kind of uh no how or uh, any uh any tricks here but uh someone asked us like how, how did we approach the bubbles and in fact it's it's super simple but again we used um splitting the main simulation into into different groups um and uh i think it's also, also yeah uh what, what we used there is um we assigned a noise based on the rest attribute, so which gave us like a, um, sort of consistent kind of like not a, not really groups, but consistent selection of points. And those selection of points were split in, brought back together, rendered, and we see this result. Um, this image, pretty straightforward as we as we said. Um, okay. Do we have the next slide? A bit of a disclaimer here, we've never used Karma before as a studio. We normally work with the different en render engines and um, 
we didn't really follow any of the updates that were being provided. Um, so we were super skeptical at the beginning and we thought like, no, this, this will not work. This, this cannot work. This cannot produce anything that we gonna like. And in our, in our mind, the karma was a bit like nuclear fusion technology. It's always far away before it's being released. Um, so first we tried to set it up through ROPS and I think Nikita can talk a bit more about this. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, quite quite an experience. So I, I remember is that I've seen quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of uh, tutorials online strictly suggesting you can do this, but you'd rather not because that was not designed uh, to be run in Rob. So on the first attempt, we we went this way, everything crashed, and we were just uh, even more skeptical about it. So on the next attempt, uh, we thought to make it proper and to go. Um, uh, to go the way it was supposed to, uh, to be, like through the salaries and through the organize everything in, in stage. So, not not I'm really not sure on, on what slide we are because I still don't see them. We're um, setting up the stage, Nikki. And we're setting up the stage. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, um, our pre karma uh, pre karma period uh, was. To, to put everything in uh, in object level context, like we have our lights, we have our camera, we have our import geo nodes, and we have our uh, red uh, render output nodes. Um, so it's pretty standard with the third party um, uh, render engines. Uh, the only difference, like uh, moving from there to stage, everything is gets from horizontal gets vertical and uh, plugs in into a single tree. That's literally the only difference from a workflow perspective. But on the bright side, like there are some tools which uh, are really handy in the light development. And uh, they were, yes, of course, they were already there. We just, we didn't know about them, but uh, uh, we simply were blown away a little bit. Um, so to sum it up, our impression from Karma, uh, comparing to, um, I think three, three, three years we were working on the, uh, on using the other render uh, from next door. Um, so our impression from Karma was loads way faster. Like we didn't experience, I think on just uh, over, over a month, we, we've had only one crash. Um, that was my fault. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, I think so. It was just, it was a lot of stuff open, but it's just uh, honestly remarkable. But saying this, uh, if you could go to the next slide, we are the next slide, Nikita. We are the next slide. But saying this is like uh, from from our perspective, is it a, is it final? Is it production ready? Not really yet. I think uh, what is what is what is missed here is a uh, is a crypto mats, First of all, it's like we just really uh, need this for production, and I think some extra features from a shading uh, department. Uh, but other than this. Um, we, very, very, very good impression from uh, from Karma. Um, are we on the slide with the uh, style frames? Yes. So if you can see, it's like it's uh, it's probably still looping. Um, one of the one of the tricks we found out, like once the scene is set up and uh, everything is working, just by varying uh, rate tracing depth for the refraction, you can get such a different look. And we were uh, in a position of actually choosing like which one works better, like. Uh, 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 again, I'm just kind of fumbling here a little bit over karma. Um, yeah, and uh, that's pretty much it. I think the uh, yeah, just to mention, of course, we were testing the XPU karma. That was yeah, that's that is important. <laughs> so yeah, just in, in general, we we absolutely loved it, and I think we will consider it as our main engine in the future. Yeah. <laughs> once once we have crypto much, yes. <laughs> okay. Report um, back. Thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, I get a second mic. Daniel, five minutes. I was curious what kind of hardware you guys were using um, with uh, Karma XPU on some of those frames and, and what kind of uh, render times you were seeing. Uh, so about this, uh, we were asked to actually to render like a second version for the for the stereo uh, 
uh, views. I'm not, I'm not sure if it, if it happened, uh, but um, we just had like a perfect uh, benchmark of how much uh, things do. So uh, at Studio, we have uh, around 14, 39 case uh, over, over seven machines. So the whole film to re-render took about, uh, about a day. In comparison, oh, sorry. The, the yeah. In comparison to Redshift, it's it was much faster, <laughs> really, especially with all that refraction that we have and um, the yeah. fact that you have a transparent surface on transparent surface with another transparent surface behind it that normally crashes everything else we've used before, and mm -hmm. in this case, it it pretty much sustained. I mean, yeah, but still runs very hot. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Speechless. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> well, so if nobody else, uh, then I think we can wrap this presentation. And the thing that Nikita was talking about, the stereo cam render, uh, it may be set up across the hall, so there's a stereoscopic display, and if they have it up and running, I haven't been able to check, uh, but if they do, have, have a look, please, it should be interesting, and then if that's not ready, then I've been told that the lounge is open and you can grab, grab a t-shirt and your flip and rubber pig head toys. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I hope I didn't ruin any surprises. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys both very much. Thank and you. thank you all for attending. And uh, have a good day. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Thanks.